Good morning, happy Friday, and welcome back to the NoFo Live Show. Um, we chat every morning, <laughs> not every morning, sorry, every Friday at 9 a.m. Um, myself and my co-host Tracy from Miss Tracy Kessler and Kelly from NoFo Endless Summer. Um, sorry, I just literally lost power and everything's coming back to life again, so I have no Wi-Fi. Um, I'm hoping it reboots and reconnects automatically, but what's a Friday live show without any technical issues, right? So I don't know if it's a um, South Hold white outage or a brownout or what, but anyway, um, that's what threw me off a little bit, but I'm here and I'm excited. Um, we're super excited because um, our guest today is the dynamic duo behind um, James Borg sourdough bread. I don't know if you've had it, but it's delicious and it's yummy and you know, given that we're in fall, we are definitely in sweater weather, in soup weather, bread weather, so I'm excited. Um, it has been so rainy, like a whole week of rain and um, gray and yuckiness. So I'm so happy that the sun came out yesterday and it's sunshiny today. So um, we may even sneak out. Um, on a boat. Friends of ours have a boat that invited us, so we're, I'm looking forward to perhaps getting in one last summery day um, outside before we enveloped in this fall winter mode. Um, I think I see... Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Am I also the only, not the only one who's late? <laughs> well, I lost, literally at 9.59, I lost power. Oh no! And I, and I was like, "Is it South Hold? Is it the whole town?" And now I have no Wi-Fi, so I'm I'm on the the um, cellular data, and I keep looking for my Wi-Fi to connect, but it's not. So whatever. All right, I think we all made it though. Yes. Hi, Anna. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hello. Hi, we're good. How are you? That's good. Did you guys also lose power? Or was it just something here? Not that I know of. Uh, okay, good. Well, good. It's a household thing, I guess. Or maybe it's a personal thing. I should check if I paid my bill. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the fan's still going, so we're good. Yeah. I still, I still don't have Wi-Fi, so I'm going with cellular data. I mean, thankfully, my phone is working. And I don't see Tracy. I think she was supposed to join us today, right? We're really struggling this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what we need? We need some bread and coffee. Yes. <laughs> If only we had some bread and coffee. <laughs> you know, that's why we launched the business. That's basically like the way, way, where it came from. Yes. You're like, wake up, let's start the day. This is what we need, right? Well, really, we had a specific coffee in mind that we couldn't find here. And so Brett figured out how to roast it. That was the, that was the first step. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh, so wow. the coffee came before the bread? It did, yeah. Oh, wow. well, no, we started doing the bread back in 2015. We've been making the bread for a while. Well, in terms of, we thought we were launching a coffee That's business. true, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you mean. You started drinking the coffee first and drank it while you made the bread. And now <laughs> the coffee, got it, got it. <laughs> yeah, Brett was making bread like every week for us since 2015. 2015, 2015. yeah. But um, we had this idea here that we had a specific coffee in mind that we couldn't find locally, and we wanted to have it for ourselves. And so we thought, well, everyone else will want it. Um, yeah. But who knew that the bread was going to by far be the winner? So yeah. never thought we'd make a bread business. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So now tell us a little bit about your background. The whole go back, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> You start. <laughs> um, well, Brett and I met in business school in the city. Uh, We're going we did... way back. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, you know, we when we moved to Seattle for a corporate job that I had, and when we were there, that was our first real introduction to living in a food food centric community. And we got really into it. Um, we started fermenting a bunch of things. Brett was uh, brewing Beer was a big thing that was going on in our house. Um, sourdough bread was a part of it, but it was just like one of 16 other things that we were doing, which is actually kind of a theme in our household. We don't, we're kind of uh, hyperactive. <laughs> and um, yeah, we, so that's how the bread making started was in Seattle. Uh, and then we got, were relocated for Brett's job to back to the city 
And when we were there, we started, he was making the sourdough bread almost as like a birthday party trick at our kids' parties where we'd have stuff for the kids and then we'd give the sourdough bread to the adults. And there were quite a few like food people that were at our children's school who had restaurants or cafes and were like, this is amazing. You guys should do something with this. And we're like, oh, that's like, that's cool that we like serve them something they liked. Like, great job, Brett, you know? Um, and then I guess what happened during the pandemic, we were here, uh, we made the decision to, um, we were doing this crazy city North Fork thing where our oldest son was in preschool in South Hold for two days a week and three days a week in Manhattan. And it was just, wow. um, yeah, we were, we were hyperactivity, like I said, is like a, a theme. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we moved, we just decided to stay here, which was pretty much a plan anyway. The pandemic just made that decision for us. Mm -hmm. um, we started volunteering on farms. Um, Brent was volunteering at Broader's Birds and I was volunteering at James Fort Farmstead. And um, we started sharing the bread with the farmers and the crew. Um, we started sharing the bread at our children's school. It was a great time to share bread because people couldn't really, you know, stop and talk at drop off or pick up. Um, so it was just a way to meet people and let them know that we were thinking about them. And from there, the business just kind of launched. It was, um, Okay, wait, I have a question. I have a question. So you were doing the bread as a side baking, and then you were volunteering at the farm. What were you doing for you? Were you actually both also doing jobs that in your career that you had planned? Or what was going on on the side? Well, I can say I'll, I'll let Brett explain his job, <laughs> job situation. But uh, I during the pandemic, I two weeks before um, we all, everything shut down. I had just rejoined Amazon after like an extended maternity plus period. Uh, and that was really hard. And um, I basically, after three months of having no childcare and trying to join a team virtually and all this stuff, I, I, I resigned. Um, yeah, I, struggle, struggles of a, you know, a, work, a young mom, of a working mom, and of course then the pandemic struggles, which really made everybody reevaluate what they were doing in their life and what yeah. career path they were taking. So I guess the, you know, it all sort of converged for you. Right, right. Yeah. And for myself, okay. um, so I've actually been with Google or Alphabet since 2010. And during the pandemic, actually at the same time that this all of a sudden started growing, I actually joined one of like Google's like startup companies that kind of spun out as its own startup as the okay. CFO at the exact same time. So it wasn't wow. really the perfect timing to start a new job and to kind of launch this business, but uh, it, it's kept us busy. You guys uh, seem to be able to do it all. It really does seem like, I mean, between work, your business, your kids, volunteering, going to pop-ups everywhere. I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I'm glad we could put on a good front. That's why we have a coffee business. <laughs> 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 Stay caffeinated. Uh, yeah, but you keep your own product. <laughs> understands that never is a perfect time to start a business, right? It sort of either organically just falls in your lap because that's what you start doing, or at some point you just have to make the hard choice and say, you know, I'm, I can't imagine, I don't know if you're still with Google or you gave it up, but I love the tagline of I gave up Google to bake bread. I mean, that's just... <laughs> well, I'm still there. I'm still at the, the new company. Uh, so it definitely keeps things busy. Uh, one thing Anna did I uh, forgot to mention, though, is back in 2015 when we were at Seattle, she, as a wedding anniversary gift, she actually got me the starter oh, right. from her favorite bakery. Ah. So that's how all this started. She didn't realize she was giving me a gift that was going to come back and uh, create a lot of chaos in the house. So now my question is, Brett, you started with the bread. And then, Anna, how did you kind of like get into, all right, like, let's make this a partnership in bread? <laughs> I, I think the, oh, the theme here is that like, this is all a really happy accident. Like the, there was no idea that we were really launching a company at the con. I feel like we're just riding on the coattails of this as it like go, as it runs its course. Um, mm -hmm. But basically 
Brett had this idea that before, like right around the pandemic happening, Brett had this idea that he wanted to start a bread CSA within the Google office. And he was going to bake like 20 breads a week for his coworkers. And I was like, that's great, honey. Like, that's so sweet. Like, go do that. Just clean up your mess. Um, <laughs> And so, like, obviously that didn't happen because people stopped coming into the office. So what Brett did instead was we took on Instagram, we took, like, by DM 20 orders for our first, like, porch pickup. And uh, it was a disaster. I mean, we made it. The bread was done, like, one minute before the pickup time. And people are really on time for their CSA pickups. So uh, they want there was, that like, fresh bread. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> So there was like piping hot bread going into bags where we didn't, we hadn't even thought through the packaging. So we were just like grabbing, I don't know, paper bags or something. I don't know what we were doing. It was a mess. Yeah, um, we had a nice conversation about what we were thinking with not, not having bags ready. Yeah, we didn't like think that. through the packaging. We didn't have a look. I mean, nothing. So, yeah. so basically that was, that's when I was like, okay, Brad, we're not doing this again. Like you, you need some help. I need to learn how to do the bread. And it took maybe, I would say two or three months for me to be like a fully functional baker of making like, you know, the first week was 20 breads and the, the orders just kept growing. So there was a certain point where when you're doing like 60 breads at a time, like you'll, you'll get it, you know, whether you want to or not, you'll, you'll learn how to, how to bake. So that's how, that's what my process was. I was basically bread, like blanking bread. Um, so that's how you started. Sorry, Sunita, but now I'm curious, how many loaves a week are you up to? <laughs> oh, it's down right now because we're sort of past that super busy period, but at the busiest. At your height, height I want to hear yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, the most we've probably done in a week is close to 300. Yeah. Wow. But more on the average in the summer is around 200. Wow. That's so, so I'm visualizing this kitchen of yours where kids are running around, and I know earlier you said clean up your mess, but now you're making a hundred, let's even say a hundred loaves of bread. Did you even have all the supplies? Like, are you quickly washing, rebaking? Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm loving this whole evolution of, oh, we'll bake some bread for coworkers to let's have a CSA pickup at our porch with 200 loaves of bread. <laughs> so it started off, we really didn't think this through. We started off where we were baking out of our regular home oven with two Dutch ovens at a time, you know, like the, the cast iron or whatever, yeah. the ceramic uh, Dutch ovens with the top. And you have to like remove the top halfway through and it's very hot. And imagine sticking your head in an oven like multiple times. Like you're, There's a point where I was like, there's not enough face moisturizer for this experience. So we started off doing that, which was chaotic. We had to have our kitchen island covered in like um, pot holders so you could like put the pot, pull the thing off, put it back. And it was just this like exercise in operations with timers all over the place. Cause every, you know, everything had its own timer. Then we, we signed on for Sang Lee's CSA and we got a second oven, which was a double oven. So then we were baking out of three with the Dutch ovens. Um, then we tried the incubator at Calverton with more Dutch ovens, which was even more difficult because then you're doing like six to eight Dutch ovens at a time in a walk-in oven. And Dutch yeah. ovens are heavy. They're, They're so like, heavy. They're so heavy. Your biceps now. I, I know. I have like. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out of practice I'm right now. The Lucy, I'm thinking of the Lucy, I love Lucy episode with the chocolates, but with bread and Dutch oh, ovens. Now, I can only Dutch have Dutch ovens bread. <laughs> that, that's pretty much that's pretty how much it was. That, yeah. And particularly also as we were scaling, we went for like, our first actually limit was 18, because that's how many we could fit in the fridge, because we cold proof everything. Wow. So we'd actually take a lot of stuff out of the fridge and put oh, it in the cooler. Oh yeah, that's right. We removed all of our stuff To make sure we fridge. had enough, like room in a cooler. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, like, we actually had a friend at the same time came over for, for drinks. She's like, actually, you guys need a friend. Well, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the phone's like, I can't take this story. <laughs> she, she was like, any chance you guys need a fridge? And we're like, yes. Uh, so we basically took that in a heartbeat, put it downstairs in the basement. That helped give us maybe another, like, up to, like, 36. Oh, jeez. 
expertise. <laughs> we can't get this. And right. then eventually so we I'm, got a, a true I'm like keeping, commercial where are you fridge. Keeping your, where are you keeping your groceries? Because I'm assuming it's the same fridge that you're trying to keep dinner for your kids. Well, and that, I mean, that was one of the many things that pushed us to our current setup. So then, you know, after displacing our groceries multiple times a day, and I mean, try raising kids in a house that's like a bakery. I mean, it's really not, you're going to cover us. Uh, it's really not, um, you know, it just wasn't working and it was really disruptive. Don't ask our kids if they like sourdough bread because <laughs> they used to and now they don't. Uh, so now, it seems like you guys kind of are flying by the seat of your pants. And I feel like, you know, as a business owner, I do the same thing. But do you ever get to a point where you're like, F this, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. How many points have you gotten to like that every other week <laughs> <laughs> well i guess there is one big difference that helped us a lot which was we went to riverhead town and asked for permission to um use a portion of our barn as a bread kitchen um which was a brand new use case for them so it took a really long time it wasn't that they weren't supportive but there was they would be setting a new precedent by saying yes to us so mm -hmm. I don't know how long that process a was. A year. A year, yeah. Um, and we finally got the yes and the approval. So now we have half of our setup in the barn and half still in our current kitchen um, with the goal to like move it all out. Um, and that has just been really life changing. So now we have real refrigeration. Our groceries have their own refrigerator. They don't have to like move out for bread friends, you know, once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that I guess we finally invested in some things that would help us grow more longer term than just playing catch up. We stopped playing catch up with the growth of the business. I think with any business, like you get to a point where you're like, am I going to stay small and be happy with how I am? Or am I going to like go all in and make this like huge? So it sounds like you guys took the steps to really get to that 300 loaf a week mark and you're doing it <laughs> yeah this is kind of our point of us staying small but like like we just like to say no more than that at this point uh just because if you try and go more than that one we don't have capacity we don't have time i mean we barely i'd say we uh technically neglect our kids uh, <laughs> i don't neglect our kids <laughs> i just say like, we don't we're not with them as much as we should so like, right there's opportunities to probably grow up more than that, but we just like, yeah. keep it at this for the right. sake of trying to stay somewhat sane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well I mean, this is so big. <laughs> is that what you're saying? You feel like you neglect the kids, but I think what I'm hearing, especially because it's part of your home-based business, is that the kids get to be involved in it. And I know, um, Anna and Brett, both of you, you've been pretty supportive of the um, flower power movement at Slow Foodie Stand, and you've managed to involve your kids into making that bread and involving them. So I'm thinking if your kitchen is spread out with all these Dutch ovens in your barn, your kids have no choice but to be part of the process and enjoy it. So <laughs> I feel like you're bringing them more value um, as because you're running the business from home as opposed to going someplace to work and isolating them from it. I hope that we're at least tr like showing them how to be entrepreneurial, you know, that they don't, you don't need much to launch a, a, an idea. If you, mm -hmm. if you have it, just, just get started. It's uh, there's a million ways to launch a business and it doesn't have to be heavy duty. Right. And parallels also. Sorry. Let's go back to the coffee for a second. Because obviously, even though you started with drinking the coffee and enjoying the coffee, you went the bread route. So how did the coffee come back into the picture? That was kind of I'm going to move our dog. Yeah, pure working. determination. And uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we have made the blend, and which is what we began drinking and we drink every day. The, like, at a certain point, we just started adding it in and asking like, Lombardi's if they want to, uh, to sell it or having as beans. I mean, we really just sell as beans are actually now cold brew as well at, at Lombardi's and, and Sing Lee. And then with the Easton Food Institute also having it there. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of putting in there as well and trying to make sure people that know we have it. There's, yeah, there's just a kind of, I mean, we don't have a coffee shop, stuff like that. So there's only kind of so much we can do. 
-hmm. but just making sure it's there. And then also developing some light roasts, uh, some just kind of different types of blends to give a little bit more variety in there as well. So now tell us where we can find your products other than the CSA that you guys do from your, from your home. Well, specifically this weekend, we're doing a pop-up on Shelter Island with a bunch of amazing vendors, including from the North Fork, there's Matatech Mushrooms, KK's, I'm sure I'm missing some, Suru Wines, but we'll be at um, 9 North Ferry Road on Shelter Island at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, but then reliably weekly, we are at Sangley on Thursdays until the end of their CSA, which is, I think it's the Thursday before Thanksgiving, um, on Saturdays, and we generally do that through the season until they close. Um, we're at Lombardi's Love Lane on Saturdays and Southwell General as well. Um, and we recently launched some frozen sourdough uh, items, frozen cinnamon rolls and pizza dough, which, uh -huh. yeah, we and we deliver those to Eastport General. They have a really nice like frozen section. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're a part of that there. And um, saying we also has the frozen items. Am I missing anything? Singley, Lombardi's, Southwell General, and Eastport General for the frozen stuff. And then over the summer, um, Gardner's Bay Country Club was actually had our bread on Shelter oh, cool. Island. And there's a really cool uh, mobile cheese right, wagon Andrew. on Shelter Island called King Andrew, and he's yeah. also been carrying Is our that bread. White, white oak wine. Um, they're often there, the winery on Shelter Island. I don't, I know they've been traveling. The last time we saw them, they were in front of like a fish, um, like a fishmonger, but yeah, oh, wow. I think he, he kind of <laughs> switches locations. Wow. So there's a question coming on is where on the South Fork um, are your products available there? Not yet. Okay. I, yeah. But that's a, uh, we've, Goals. that's a goal. Yeah. Next summer, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we've we've so talked about it quite often. We, we tried to get into West Hampton farmers market but they didn't have any availability uh and also just as we kind of talked about like the keeping that capacity kind of it's hard we, as much as we want to it, there's been kind of some limitations in there as well but it's definitely a goal that we want to do and we've talked about a few places to try and open it up to to south fork when we're able to have more capacity as well oh right and then i guess the closest location and where people tend to come from other directions is uh our plan is to be at East End Food Institute's Farmer's Market this, um, this uh, Is this the one in Riverhead you're talking about? Yeah, in Riverhead, yeah. I mean, they haven't confirmed the vendor list just yet, so we can't say anything for certain, but that we were there last, last winter until April. It's so nice to visit that Farmer's Market during the winter, because you feel like you can kind of like get that nice like farm stand vibe, but in an indoor setting. So yeah. You have yeah. Very, yeah. So I have a question about the bread itself. I mean, obviously it's delicious and my go-to, I didn't know it was at Southwell General. Um, and so Lombardi's is where I usually get mine because I'm in Southwell. Unfortunately, I'm the only one in my house that eats bread. So it's quite a big loaf. So <laughs> I have been slicing it and freezing a little bit of it and then, you know, enjoying it. So is it a good bread to freeze? I mean, that's the only way I know how to enjoy it because I can't eat a whole loaf in one sitting. I mean, I could. <laughs> Yeah, is it something I think you it's doing or not. I think it's a great. Uh, we actually probably have four, four or five breads in the freezer for when we don't have any as well. Um, yeah, basically for at least a whole loaf, put it in the freezer and then put it in the oven at three fifty for like thirty five to forty minutes. And honestly, it's almost as good as new. Like you, you can't really. Like, the crust is a little bit crustier, but the inside is steamy, like soft, moist. It's it's amazing. So don't uh, throw it. Put it straight from freezer to oven. Yeah, yeah, straight to freeze okay. through the oven. As you start to thaw, it starts losing the moisture and so it can dry out that way. So I just put it straight straight into the oven frozen. Sounds good. Tell me a little bit more about these frozen products you mentioned. It's pizza dough, is it dough, is it bread? What, what are you starting? Um, so the two frozen things are our frozen cinnamon rolls as well as the, the pizza dough. So it is, it is pizza dough. I mean, it's similar as our regular bread, but it's kind of meant to be for pizza. Um, so yeah, it comes in a bowl and you just got to roll it out and put some flour into it and then put whatever toppings you want on there and put it in the oven. Um, so it's pretty simple. <laughs> I love, uh, it. I love it. I can't wait to try it. I mean, I, I can already visualize some flatbreads and you know. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the pe between the pizza dough and the cinnamon rolls, we've got our whole fall and winter <laughs> at home cooking planned. 
Yeah. We've definitely been playing with some different pizzas lately. Um, I don't know. I've been kind of, we've been more kind of a pepper fate, pepper and onions of putting a lot of like pepperoncino and hot cherry peppers from Sing Lee and nice. uh, just different Do stuff on there. Do I see a there. pizza oven in your future? Oh that- God, no more ovens. No. <laughs> yeah. and we've actually, okay. Like, okay, no more ovens, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be looking forward in your newsletters for some recipes and ideas and toppings on how to use the pizza. That's a good idea. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah we should idea. do that. We should do yeah. that. Yeah. That, that, that sounds good to me. And just, and the, you know, even the way you're describing it, I want to go out and get it now. Is that already out and available? And where can we get that? Singly and Eastport General, okay. uh, both of them actually just dropped off a whole fresh batch to uh, Singly yesterday, so they should have plenty Ooh. as well. Yeah, who and knows? Nice. With your products, they fly off the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> you like announce that bread drop, and I'm like, "Ooh, let me run over there," and it's like one left by the time I get over. Like two hours later, <laughs> <laughs> it's like- delicious. The frozen products are really nice too because they give us a lot of flexibility. Like the the sourdough bread is, um, it is a really long process. It takes 48 hours to make the bread from end to end, which is why we only deliver twice a week. Even adding a third day would just push this house into seven days a week working. Um, so right now we're doing six days a week, which you know seems uh, we can manage it. Um, and then with the frozen products, they can be done almost any time and we can drop them off and the, there's no, you know, it's just a matter of keeping someone else's freezer full. So it's given us a lot of flexibility with um, that way. So we're also huge fans of the frozen products. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and a quick, another question about the coffee. Is it, is it ground beans or is it um, cold brewed coffee? What exactly yeah. is it? And so the core thing that we have is our whole beans. Uh, so whole beans. Now, when people order them off the porch, like the CSA, you can always ask for them to get ground if you want. Uh, but along with the, the whole beans, we also do a cold brew that, uh, Kelly, you've actually, you had uh, as well at one point, but we have that at Sing Lee as well as Lombardi. So we, we have both. Okay. My husband's a big fan of the cold brew too. He's a big coffee guy. So just drink it black. You don't need to add anything to it. It's very smooth. I can, I can attest to it. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. We could talk to you guys all day about this. I can't believe we are getting to the point where we have to wrap up the show. So I really do want to hear your perspective on life on the North Fork. So when you're not drinking coffee, do you visit any of the local vineyards or breweries? What's your preference? And do you have any recommendations? Yeah. Take it. Uh, so I guess maybe it has to do with bubbly fermentation, but we've been going for uh, breweries lately. Um, uh, Pecana County Brewing has been a family favorite just because they also have food and it's just very casual. It's very Seattle where like you can go for lunch and have a beer and bring your kids and they can play games and stuff like that. So that's been a big win for our family, especially good like too. Good Burgers. Like that's a post East End Food Institute thing for us we'll we'll go to the market sell um go for lunch and and just hang out for a bit um we also like north fork brewery they are north fork brewing they have some good um food vendors that come into their parking lot like they'd had a really nice dumpling truck the that dumpling kept wagon, which is really good yeah the dumpling wagon um and then I guess closer to home jamesport vineyard has a really nice like outdoor situation it's beautiful to sit out there Matabella, Matabella, Matabella and Oldfield yeah. are two others. If you want to go like further east, and we actually got engaged at the Oldfield. Oh, oh see, that's the problem with the North Fork. There are so many good places. There's just no way to say one or two. When yeah. you start talking about them, it's almost like I like this for this, and I like that for that. There's just. Yeah. So and many- when you guys have a minute to have like a date night, where's your go-to restaurant? Um, Anchor. Anchor. Yeah, Anchor in Greenport. Our neighbor Will Horowitz. Um, he's a chef and he put us onto the restaurant and they have this amazing rooftop with this really cool canopy um, where you have this like indoor outdoor vibe and you can see the water and the food is um, it's like sea- heavy seafood and not like the food wow. is not heavy but it's like a seafood menu and it's just really creative and, and really good mm-hmm. yeah I mean yeah. there's a lot of things on there that I never thought to order and we went for the first time we started ordering things that we recognized he's like can I can I reorder for you <laughs> And so it did, and it just kind of blew our minds. And really, yes. it's definitely a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know in the last couple of years, they've made some great changes there, including that rooftop canopy um, yeah. dining area. So yes, I was just at Green Hill yes, last night um, across the street from them. I know they're related, which was great mm -hmm. too. Different type of menu. I mostly went for the open mic night, which I will highly recommend Thursday night. It was really fun. You know, a lot of locals playing. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize they have that great space upstairs that has yeah. all the music. Yes, it was, it was super fun. Yeah. What so, about, sorry, Zanita, go ahead. <laughs> uh, we're in Jamesport, obviously. So any tips on good places to catch a sunrise <laughs> sunset in that area? Or do you drive and go elsewhere? I mean, our house has like, we just, we have these windows that face west and it's been, we, it's like a daily thing. That's what we, that's what we check out. Um, we took a really fun sailboat ride recently, just coming off of the Jamesport like boat launch area with a, a neighbor. He took us out because the days are getting shorter. And so we saw the sunrise and the sunset and moonrise okay. on the bay. Just, you know, just very, apart. very close yeah. to the, the Jamesport beach. And it was just gorgeous. Um, what were you saying? I said, yeah, it's like they're within minutes apart. Like they just, I don't know if there's like a certain day or like time frame, but like as one was coming down, the other one was coming up yeah. and it was pretty cool to see them both pretty much at the same time. Wow, that is cool. I've never seen that. So yeah. now I, I'm not going to make you tell us what your favorite farm stand is because I feel like it may be like a business conflict of interest. <laughs> you want to say what your, your favorite farm stand is or keep it to yourself? <laughs> I mean, we can, we have a lot, we pretty much shop by farm stand. So yeah, we have obviously Sangley is a big part of our farm stand routine. Um, mm -hmm. But we go everywhere for everything. I feel like uh, Thai, Thai Kludes raw milk is a huge part of our, you know, weekly pickup. We love it. It's amazing. Um, we do eight hands for a lot of their um, prepared food and their shop there. Bacon. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Tell them about the bacon setting. And their bacon is amazing. Uh, <laughs> what setting do you one. make them cut it at? For at you? Setting 12, extra yes. thick. Oh, wow. Good. Steakhouse Good style bacon. Specific. I like it. <laughs> They're like, wait, what? They're, it's like very, very thick. And they, even though it's like he c keeps ordering it, they always just double check that he, that's really what he means. Yeah. Um, like, are you sure you want <laughs> like slab of pork or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, and then when we're at the East End Food Market, we shop all the vendors. And a typical uh, circuit we would do is. Um, we do the firm for kombucha, sweet wood on the farm for like herbalist stuff, herbalism things, um, real steep oil. Oh, Meekox Bay Meekox. Dairy. We've obviously sang lay with them as well. The yeah. one we haven't mentioned that uh, close relation with too is Jamesport Farmstead. Oh yeah, the best, the best, like beyond organic vegetables. Yeah, I told you we were gonna ask hard hitting questions. <laughs> I I'm, also, I'm sure there's others out there. We just, those are just kind of our routines. Nice. That's it? I mean, that's it? Just the 15 of just, them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the browners for the pot pie. I like this. The browners pot pie. And uh, our kids love their moon pies because, you know, they won't eat our baked goods, so, but they'll eat the browners baked goods. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so grateful that you moved from Seattle, one food-centric place, to another gorgeous, beautiful, earth-friendly, food-centric place on the North Fork. Um, so tell us if you can sum up in a couple of sentences, what you love about being part of the North Fork community. I think there's something so special of being in community with the food producers where they are producing food versus like, you know, we meet them at a farmer's market because we don't live near the food production. So I just really love that we're here making with other makers and we can, uh, we've had to lean on people for refrigerator space or freezer space or whatever from time to time. And we all help each other out, whether it's with like, kids, you know, child care, swapping, you know, can I drop Quinn with you for a little bit? I'll take JB, whatever. Um, there's just like, we're all in it together and we really care and we have the resources here to make really wonderful food. And um, that's so, that just feels so unique. I feel like there's not another place where we would be doing this and so close to like water and having all the beauty of the North Fork here. Oh, that sounds awesome. awesome. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. Somewhere, so, but I just say it's a community based around creating things from scratch, yeah. which is kind of a close value to us, and also very just supportive of each other as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like Lombardi's was the first place to carry our stuff, and just she wanted to carry stuff from the North Fork, and it was just, uh, it was kind of 
one of the things that kind of helped catapult the, the beginning of it as well. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> I, I love that common theme we hear frequently on the show is how so many different businesses, local businesses collaborate with each other, which, with each other and support each other and help uplift. And sometimes it can be something as small as like you mentioned, well, I'll help you, you know, I have a refrigerator or I'll help you watch your kids so you can do something for two hours. Um, I think that's one of the things we love about living here is the, is the community that, that holds us all together. Um, sure. yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the delicious bread you bake. Um, and we are so excited. I'm so excited to try that, to try the cold brew. Oh, I'm running out there this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and the number 12 setting on the bacon. My husband will appreciate yes. that. So Take thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Sunita. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Bye, guys. Pleasure chatting with you. Bye. 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 Bye.